In this presentation, I would like to highlight some practical aspects in the application of the analytic hierarchy and analytic network process. First, I will talk about the pros and cons of the analytic hierarchy process and give some suggestions for its practical application. Then I will talk about the analytic network process, the pros and cons, and provide a few suggestions how to set up a network model. Finally, in a comparison of AHP with ANP, I will share my personal experience in the selection of one or the other method for practical applications. So let's start with the pros and cons of the analytic hierarchy process. A very obvious advantage of the method is of course the hierarchical structuring of decision problems. Structuring a decision problem as a hierarchy is very natural and easy. As in business we are trained to break down complex issues into smaller sub-issues. When I introduced AHP the first time, the hierarchy describing the problem could easily be explained to the people involved in the evaluation. Another good point is the possibility of combining the inputs from several persons. For example, with four participants, each of them asked to give his comparison, you take the input from each cell of the decision matrix and build the geometric mean to get the consolidated AHP input matrix. My experience in general, the final result resulting from the consolidated input is accepted and people usually agree with the outcoming priorities. A further advantage of AHP is the possibility to handle all calculations with a spreadsheet program as for example Excel. Once you have a template ready, it can be used for all kind of decision problems with different number of criteria. A ready to use Excel template is available from the author. It can handle up to 8 criteria. So what are the disadvantages of the method? Although it sounds strange, because the whole method is based on it, the pairwise comparison of criteria is one of the crucial issues. It looks like this pairwise comparison is a quite artificial way of comparing a set of items. People are more used to either give a ranking, so sorting by importance or relevance, or confirm agreement disagreement with statements. Another indication for that is also the fact that many of the inputs from comparisons which I received applying the method resulted in a too high consistency index. And then it's a real challenge to explain this to the people you ask for inputs or even request them to reconsider their inputs. My conclusion, many people approach a decision problem in a much less rational and logical way. For them it is a challenge to follow the concept and do an evaluation using the pairwise comparison and the scale as required by AHP. So my summarized experience and recommendations for using AHP. When using AHP, try to structure the model in groups of maximum 4 to 5 criteria or sub-criteria. If possible, introduce additional hierarchical levels. Spend time to explain the pairwise comparison and use of the scale to those participants who have no knowledge of AHP. Ask them to use the whole range of the 1 to 9 scale. Then, when you evaluate the results, even inputs with consistency value above the recommended limit still can be used with some caution. The results usually reflect the correct ranking. AHP is ideal to get a consolidated result for inputs from several participants using the geometric mean. 
Once AHP is introduced and used as the method for decision making, results are in general accepted, as the method is based on mathematics and seen as neutral and objective. Using the analytic network process ANP. Due to its more general approach, using a network instead of a hierarchy, ANP can be used for any kind of decision problems. Some problems even can only be described with ANP and not with AHP. Setting up a model, ANP really forces you to precisely define the nodes and interconnections. This requires a thorough thinking through the problem and therefore is one of the highlights of ANP. It is the ideal tool to gain a much deeper understanding of a specific decision problem and how different factors interrelate. On the other hand, an explanation of ANP to your management if you want to introduce it as a tool in your organization, is extremely challenging. In my opinion, here lies one of the limitations of ANP. You can see that many publications using ANP in more or less practical applications are coming from universities or research institutes. Another problem of ANP is the requirement for a specific software to calculate the results. Though free and commercial software packages are available, you have to become familiar with user interface and operation before you can start to use them for the method. Due to the complexity of a network model incorporating feedback loops and interrelations, a verification of the result is not really possible. As a summary, ANP is too complex for implementation as a standard tool to make practical decisions in an organization. Using ANP, setting up the model is the most difficult part of the process. Let me give you a few tips. The first step setting up a model in ANP is a careful consideration and clear description of the decision problem. Then you have to find important criteria and relevant factors. A good method is brainstorming using a team of people. Once you have selected criteria and factors, you need real clarity and definitions of their exact meanings, but more difficult is the step to find the interconnections between the nodes. This requires a systematic investigation. For complex models with a large number of factors or criteria, you could already start with preliminary comparison to filter out factors with low impact. Try to simplify first, anyway the model can be extended later. Once you have finished the model, make a critical assessment of the outcoming result. Whatever outcome you get, the method can only be as good as the model description is. And don't forget, it's only one of many possible methods which can support you in your decision making. Whatever method you use, finally, the one who decides has to take the responsibility for the decision. Let me summarize my experience with AHP and ANP. Use AHP instead of ANP whenever possible. Try to keep the number of nodes in a cluster between 3 and 5 for both methods. Use the analytic network process also as a tool to gain deeper insight into complex decision problems. Use AHP as a method to get a consolidated ranking of criteria from a team or group of people.